Okay, so this video should help you start to talk, um, think about section 7.3, which we're now going to be taking what we know about all these trigonometric functions, and we're going to put them in equations, and we're going to be able to actually solve for values. We're going to be solving for um, theta most of the time. So this should help you with the 7.3 prep quiz. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is look into solving equations involving a single trigonometric function. For example, if you're given an equation such as 2 sine theta plus 4 equals 5, and you're asked to solve the equation over the interval 0 to 2 pi, what you do is just what you would expect. You want to get, we want to get theta by itself. So first thing we do is subtract both sides by 4. So we have 2 sine theta equals 1. Divide both sides by 2 and we get sine theta equals one half. So now we want to figure out what angles between 0 and 2 pi have a sine value of positive one half. One thing I want you to notice here, do you see that the original function does not have any inverse sine, cosine, or tangent? Since there's no inverse in the original function, then we don't have to worry about restricted domain. So, we're just looking for what angles have a sine value of positive one half on the unit circle between zero and two pi. And if we think about that, positive sine is positive in quadrants one and two, and the sine is the y value on the unit circle. So if we see the y value in the unit circle, is one half at pi over six and also at five pi over six. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. So our angle, theta, is gonna be pi over six and five pi over six. And that is between zero and two pi. If we rotate around the unit circle a second time, then we will hit, what is that, 13 pi over six? and then this next one, and it goes on forever and ever and ever. So there are an infinite number of angles that have a sine value of one half, but this question is just asking us for the values between zero and two pi. So this brings us to this next problem, that instead of asking us for the angles between zero and two pi, they're asking us for a general formula for all of the solutions. So our, we're gonna have a little bit different approach here. So, first thing we're going to do is look at this equation. There's no inverse cosine in the original function, so we don't have to worry about restricted domain. So, this one is pretty simple. It's already kind of solved, or cosine theta is already um, isolated. So, we're looking for what angles between, or what angles have a cosine value of negative root 2 over 2, which some of you may call this negative 1 over root 2. And if we look on our unit circle, remember cosine is the x value. The cosine um, is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. So the x value is negative root 2 over 2 <coughs> at 3 pi over 4 and at 5 pi over 4. Okay, so those are the values between 0 and 2 pi. But this question is asking us for a general formula for all of the solutions. So the way we write our general formula is that we say theta is equal to 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. And theta is equal to 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. What that means is 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k basically means that theta is equal to 3 pi over 4, which we know that. And then, remember, k is any integer. So we're going to rotate 2 pi around the unit circle. Of k. So if k is equal to 0, our answer is going to be 3 pi over 4. When k equals 1, it's going to be 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi, which lands us there again. When k equals 2, it's going to be 3 pi over 4 plus 4 pi, which is a, two rotations around the unit circle. Still lands there. 
So all of these angles have a cosine value of negative root 2 over 2. Same thing for 5 pi over 4. So this is our general formula. Now they want us to list all the solutions for k equals 0, k equals 1, and k equals 2. So when k equals 0, our theta values are going to be 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi times 0, which is 0. So 3 pi over 4, and then same thing for this one, 5 pi over 4. When k equals 1, theta is going to be 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi which is going to be 3 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4, which gives us, what is that, 12 pi over 4? Which is 3 pi. And then we'll also have theta equals 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi. So that's going to give us 5 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4, which is 12. Oh, wait, this was, sorry, this wasn't 12 pi. This should have been 11. 8 plus 3 is 11, not 12. So that's not 3 pi. That's 11 pi over 4. And then this one should be 5 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4. 8 plus 5 is 13 pi over 4. So those are the theta values when k equals 1. And then when k equals 2, it's going to be 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi times 2, which is going to be 4 pi. So 3 pi over 4 plus um, 16 pi over 4 which is 19 pi over 4, and then 5 pi over 4 plus 16 pi over 4 is equal to 21 pi over 4. So those are our solutions for k equals 0, 1, and 2. I know that it gets kind of tedious, but um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of keeping straight with those numbers. Okay, so this brings us to a problem like this. If you're asked to find the, um, we just have to solve this between 0 and 2 pi. And we're asked to solve 4 cosine squared theta equals 1. Again, first step, divide both sides by 4. So you get cosine squared theta equals 1 fourth. Now to get cosine by itself, we need to take the square root of both sides. When we take the square root of both sides, and here's the trick to this one, this is going to be cosine theta equals, and remember, whenever you take a square root, so when we take the square root, when we draw the radical in ourselves, we always have to remember to put the plus or minus. So this is going to be plus or minus 1 over root 2. So we have to, now, so now what we're going to do is look at our trusted unit circle, and we have to look for all angles between 0 and 2 pi that have a cosine value of positive 1 half or negative 1 half. So that's going to fall in all four quadrants. So in quadrant one, the cosine value, which is the x value, is 1 half pi over 3. Um, in quadrant two, the cosine value is negative 1 half. The x value is negative 1 half in 2 pi over 3. Quadrant three, the cosine value is, neg is negative 1 half at 4 pi over 3, and in quadrant 4, the cosine value is positive 1 half at 5 pi over 3. So our angles, theta, between 0 and 2 pi are going to be pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. <coughs> and the main trick to these problems is whenever you take a, take a square root, when you draw the radical in, you've got to remember that plus or minus. And then the last problem that we're going to do is a problem that looks like this. And the only difference here between this and the other ones is that theta is not by itself anymore inside the sine function. It's not a big deal. It's pretty straightforward, actually. Okay, so we're going to ignore that 2 theta right there for now. We're going to pretend like it's just sine theta. 
So we're going to set, we need to figure out what values have a sign, what values have a sign, what angles have a sign value of root 3 over 2, positive root 3 over 2. So it's going to have to be in quadrant, sine is positive in quadrant 1 and 2. So the sine value, the y value, is positive root 3 over 2 at pi over 3 and at 2 pi over 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this as since it's not theta, it's 2 theta. We're going to say 2 theta equals pi over 3 plus 2k pi. And I'll explain why I'm doing that in a minute. Then I'm saying 2 theta equals 2 pi over 3 plus 2k pi. So now I have to figure out what angles have a sign, what angles have a sign of 2 theta between 0 and 2 pi. So I think it's pretty obvious that the next step here is we're going to divide both sides by 2. Now, the reason I said plus 2k pi, even though it's telling us the interval 0 to 2 pi, is that when we divide both sides by 2 here, we have to divide both sides by 2, including the 2k pi. And you'll see that sometimes, even though it only appears that there are two angles between two and uh, 0 and 2 pi, sometimes some other angles will sneak in. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a, mi in a minute. OK, so what we need to do now is divide both sides by 2. And we get theta equals pi over 6 plus 2 divided by 2, which is 1, plus k pi. Then for this one, we'll get divide both sides by 2 again. We get theta equals 2 pi over 6 plus 2 divided by 2, which is 1 k pi. So that simplifies to be theta equals pi over 3 plus k pi. So these are, the, these are the general solutions to this equation. And do you see that pi over 6 plus k pi, that's pi over 6 plus 1 pi. So they're saying here that if we plug in k equals 1, well, first let's always do k equals 0. When k equals 0, we get theta equals pi over 6 and pi over 3. Now let's do k equals 1. When k equals 1, we get theta equals pi over 6 plus pi, which is pi over 6 plus 6 pi over 6, which is 7 pi over 6. So 7 pi over 6 is also between 0 and 2 pi. So that is an answer. So these are our first two answers. That's an answer. Let's try theta equals pi over 3 plus pi. So pi over 3 plus 3 pi over 3, which is 4 pi over 3. Again, 4 pi over 3 is between 0 and 2 pi. So those values need to be included. They are between 0 and 2 pi. Now let's try k equals 2. So in k equals 2, we're going to say pi over 6 plus 2 pi. Well, pi over 6 plus 2 pi, hopefully you can see right here that if you start at pi over 6 and you add 2 pi, we're going to be over 2 pi immediately. So we know that's not going to work, but we can try it anyway. Pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6 gives us 13 pi over 6. And we know 13 pi over 6 is over 2 pi. So we know we can stop there. So our solutions are the circled ones, pi over 6, pi over 3, 7 pi over 6, and 4 pi over 3. So you have to be careful about that just because sometimes it can appear that values are outside of 2 pi when they really are some, some kind of sneak in. So I hope this helps.